What does the scouter say about his- Hi pal, nice to meet you. It's over 9,000! One of my favorite proofs of the flood of Noah and the global flood is the fact that we find clams in the closed position on the top of Mount Everest. <laughs> oh wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> now, we know that Mount Everest was most likely formed during the flood through catastrophic plate tectonics. Wrong. And while that happened, there were clams from the sea life that were actually pushed up the mountain and they were buried with sediment at the same time. This may seem like a dumb point, but a clam can swim. Clams can swim relatively fast, up to 35 kilometers per hour. If a clam wants to move because it doesn't like what's happening, it will move. Did Mount Everest rise so incredibly quickly that the clams couldn't escape? Is that your argument here? Clams, when they die, naturally they open up and a scavenger will come and eat them. The only reason that we find clams that are in the closed position on the top of Mount Everest is because they were buried by an event. Um, well, I mean, a mudslide. Now, these clams were as big as cars, and so the event had to be catastrophic. We all know Matt Powell is just great value can't hold it. So let me go back to the original shitty source to explain what he's doing wrong here. Petrified clams on top of Mount Everest. In Peru, a couple years ago, they found giant oysters up to 11 feet across, two miles above sea level. If Matt Powell wants to talk about Mount Everest, he shouldn't bring up clam sizes from the Andes Mountains. Those are not the same thing. I've yet to find any evidence of car-sized clams on top of Mount Everest. Likewise, the picture that Kent Hovind uses, as he says, is two foot. What the fuck two foot cloud cars are you driving, Matt Powell? Get in the game. And so, what would cause a clam as big as a car to be found in the closed position on the top of Mount Everest? Um, well, I mean, a mudslide. The only explanation for that is the flood of Noah. You two are just dumbing a bag of hammers. How does Noah's flood relate to dead clams? I need a bit more explanation of this, Matt Powell. Provide something, anything. Do something! Gah. <laughs> now, recently I was watching a debate between Dr. Kent Hovind and Maddie from Science Side Up, and Maddie claimed that the reason that you're gonna find closed clams is just because like a little mudslide just came and covered the clams, and so they weren't able to open. Matt Powell is so disingenuous, it actually hurts to watch this stuff. In this video that Matt Powell posted, he shows a clip of Maddie talking. I've been showing it throughout this video. She doesn't say small mudslide. He is purposefully lying about what she said in order to try to bolster his bullshit argument. It's sad. Well, I mean, a mudslide. Besides Matt Powell's obvious lies, massive mass wasting events happen all the time. They happen nowadays. How big of a mudslide do you think it needs to be to bury a clam? Even a two foot clam. You don't need to bury that much stuff. And mudslides can be huge. He, again, he's not actually making a point. He's just talking out of his ass. Thank you for all your cooperation. And that was their rescue device. That's their rescue device as evolutionists is just a little mudslide did it. The real kicker to this entire video is that Matt Powell has to have a mudslide to cover the clams too. But apparently when we have a mudslide, it's bad. But when he has a mudslide, it's fine. What, what the fuck is that? The fuck, the fuck, there's something fucking wrong. But here's the thing. You would have to have a pretty catastrophic mudslide in order for clams to be found in the closed position that are as big as cars. How catastrophic, Matt Powell? Do you have any idea? Have you calculated the amount of sediment that must be deposited on top of a clam that it can't escape out? Do you know? Have you done the math? Has any creationist done the math? I'm asking because I can't find it anywhere. You're just making bold assertions without any evidence, without any reason. 
and then demanding someone respond to your bullshit argument. I'm afraid we need to use math. And so, yeah, Maddie, actually, you're right. It would have caused, it would have had to have been a mudslide, but a catastrophic one. So your admission that a mudslide is what would have caused that, that's what we'd expect in the flood. So good job. <laughs> I'm going to sidestep the deep problems with Noah's Flood doing all geology and all fossilization throughout the world in one year, instead focus up a bit on Mount Everest, which is exactly what Matt Powell is talking about. The top of Everest is limestone, the very tip top of it. Not the entirety of Mount Everest, not the entirety of the Himalayas are covered in limestone, just this little peak. Below that, metamorphic rock. Below that, granites. You have dikes, you have intrusions, you have lots and lots of complicated geology going on up here. You want one event to produce all this variety of geology while simultaneously buried clams in enough sediment to keep them from closing while simultaneously upthrusting these mountains, not only in Asia, but also throughout the world, because again, the car sized clams, those are the Andes Mountains in South America. So this is all happening throughout the world, simultaneously, all this exciting geology, and you just wipe your hands and say, oh, Noah's flood, stop asking questions, Jesus. Like that's a good answer, like that provides us an answer. That doesn't, you need to do more work. Creationists need to do more work than say, hey, I personally don't get this, therefore you're wrong. That's not a good answer. That's not even an answer. That's an admission that you don't know what you're talking about. Not evidence of an issue with the broad field of geology. If Matt Powell did some work, and some, some creationist geologists go out there and do work. They don't do a lot of work, but they actually do something. Hell, at least some creation geologists put on little geology hats and pretend better. Matt Powell does nothing but parrot other people's work that they themselves have not done work. Kent Hovind doesn't do geology, has never done geology. Why the fuck is Matt Powell parroting him? It's sad. Linked below, I always do, linked below papers. Read up on the geology of Mount Everest if you want to know. Don't listen to Matt Powell. He is really painfully bad at this stuff. And he's a smug prick. <laughs>